And joining me on the podcast, and live, well, it's not live, it's on video though, that's what I'm saying, live uh, in his stripy shirt, Alan it's Green, CEO of Brand Communications. You all right, fella? Yeah, I'm fine, just at least you haven't mentioned the fact that uh, these are my pyjamas, because they're not. That's what the last guy said to me, who I yeah. spoke to this morning, he said, why have you got your pyjamas on, Star? I said, well, well not, it, it, so. yeah, but they're not pyjamas, because it's, it's got a very formal collar for a pyjama. Exactly. Normally, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. tell the difference, but uh, I can't tell if you're wearing any bottoms though, Al. So that's more disconcerting oh. than anything. It's, well, it's always well, that. But just to, be fair, man. just to be fair, we can't tell if you're wearing any bottoms either. You know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll prove it to you later. Woohoo! <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised. <laughs> That'll uh, have the viewers speculating now, won't it? Let's, yeah. let's face it. Uh, anyway, uh, check out uh, Alan PJ Green. On the video there, you can check it out. Are they to me? It's not obvious. They say jeans, and he's got very cold legs. They're blue, but um, jeans there. Uh, so I uh, did you watch the watch the game yesterday, Al? I, I did. I did. Yes. Sir. Yeah. I, I, well, I was very privileged because um, we we had a a great Sunday and um, and uh, finally we we spent uh, spent the weekend in London. Uh, well, the weekend up to Sunday morning, got back Sunday morning, uh, actually got out on the motorbike very quickly, which is great. And then nice dog walk Sunday afternoon. And then I broke the news to Mrs. G and I said, um, Spurs are playing tonight and they're on TV. Oh. Do we have to watch it? Can't we watch this, 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 this? So and, you uh, don't have to. You can go for a walk. I'll watch it. <laughs> well, this is it. This is it. I, I, said, I said, well, I'll go upstairs. I, I said, I'll go upstairs here. Like, we've got the old sky eye upstairs or whatever, so you can watch it upstairs. And so, yeah. so no, no, we watched it there and it was uh, it was very good. But as ever, it was all a bit wobbly at the back. And, you know, the first goal for a score, we were just all over the place. I mean, what were the defence doing? Goodness me. Well, it's good that, but you know, you come away with three one. You know, I, I so my my son was there again. My wife went with him and yeah. um, drove all the way up. They drove all the way back and um, for the game. But um, yeah, and I, I was just watching, you know, paying attention on sort of uh, Google scores on Google Sports there, and, and uh, I saw one nil up straight away. On the top, it was a good start. And all of a sudden, Tottenham Forest came back one all. Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, but then he yeah. fair play. Uh, two more goals in the second half. Uh, up to, hmm. up to the fourth position, I think. Uh, a game in hand, same points point as Aston Villa, but a game in hand. So it's uh, you know, it's it's, it's respectable. How long left of the season, Zick? I'm not a huge football fan, but uh, well, the next two games, the, the next two games, they've got um, they've got not uh, Newcastle away on oh, this and Man City Saturday. as well, isn't it? And they've got and Arsenal. Arsenal and Arsenal and Man City. Yeah. Plus, they've got to play a game against Chelsea as well, which Ooh, is kind of the return so, legs. So tricky. So mm. they've got a pretty tricky, but actually. Uh, most of the time, uh, Spurs tend to play better against the bigger sides. Or, or the, yeah, I noticed that they do. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm, so, I'm stuck against a team you'd think they'd have no problems against. They could, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm stuck. So yeah. that's a yeah. mental uh, attitude. You know, the, the, the under, you know, the, it's like anything. The, the underdog will try their best to beat a better team. I mean, the better team then, if they get a bit blasé and just take it for granted, it, it's, it's hard. Then it's you know, switch your psychology around. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, uh, let's look at the market. Al, this is uh, let's look at the, let me just get rid of this second uh, uh, view. Put some on the screen there. I don't want it, don't want it to show anyone. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> there's the aim all share. No, I just didn't want to show my, my tab. Aim all share okay. there. Um, and uh, it's look at that nice little rally from the lows of what's that, uh, October? It was at mm -hmm. 670 there, and now at 744. Hit that high, but it's having a nice bounce along here, consolidating. And I think it's only a matter of time if it'll move up again now and start pushing up. Let's see what the RSI is, is doing. Because the RSI, oh, the RSI is building a little bit there. So it'd be nice to see that. Uh, if we can get to uh, you know, 60 on the RSI, that's going to move up towards that top of the range. So, and let's be honest, if you look at the economic climate, I mean, in fact, I did highlight this today. I'm on Twitter feed today. Have a look at this. Um, so UK growth at a turning point as the economy mm. gains momentum. Output from UK business has risen for the second consecutive month yep. to its highest level in nearly two years. Uh, hopes are building this morning that the UK economy is pulling out of recession and uh, it's a turning point there. So that's good news. And also another one, Dr. Copper, which is all, 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 always um, you know, a good sort of barometer of the world economy and the, how it's performing. That is at, uh, it's try, it's, let me get the commodities up here. Uh, there we are. There we are. Copper, copper. That means yeah, the last, yeah. that, was, that was over a year ago when it hit that sort of previous high at this level. And now it's attacking that with a bit of verve. 
And in fact, yeah, gold as well. So, I mean, I think this is what central banks, isn't it, really? But um, well, gold is. Uh, I, I I put up a post this morning on, on my own feed. You know, the uh, the China China have been accumulating gold. Uh, this is the seventeen seventeenth straight month that they've been adding to their gold reserves, and uh, you know that's a that's a very telling sign. But of course, look at the price. I mean, it, you know, I think everyone was predicting gold three four thousand dollars an ounce, and uh, You know, for the first time, we've really broken out, haven't we? It's it's really look broken. at that breakout. Yeah, I mean that Yeah, yeah. that, that, that level, that two thousand level, was uh, you know attacked. It was. you know, one, two, It three, was there for years. four, five. I, I mean, I mean, You two know, thousand from has been the bench benchmark for years and years and years. yeah, twenty and twenty. Look, twenty twenty. that, You try to go. I mean, you could go yeah, back. Did go back. It, it was back at that level. Um, yeah, where is it? Uh, nineteen hundred back in two thousand eleven, and then it got uh, big yeah, bowl, yeah. a big bowl, big bowls formation. That that big bowl took eleven, Hmm. eight, nine years. Sorry, nine years to get you know from that. It attacked that 1900 level in 2011 and took nine years to uh, rally to 2000, pull back a bit, and now it's running again. That's very good. So you'll, you'll see that It, gold it, it's does really that such as a big rallies. it, that that's a, a massive massive breakout and i just said you know there are so many junior junior mining explorers that uh, have really good gold assets and it's just Go on, not they name one. <laughs> well he, well ecr for instance who i'm going to talk about shortly you know they've just made a significant discovery today in Kwasit. and uh, you know that's uh, it, it's factors like this that should You know, this sort of breakout should be registering on the share price of these companies. So, um, so you know that Yeah, it's but it's it's exploring, aren't they? So it's it's not as if they're selling the gold. You know, by the time they get to pull that out of the ground, gold could be back down at eleven hundred. You never know. well, uh, well, the thing is, it, it, it's in the ground. They're actually they're, they're going down a few meters, uh, and they're and they're finding this stuff. You know, and they're finding it over extended areas. So uh, actually. Uh, getting at, get, getting out the gold is is not going to be so much of an issue. But I mean, we mentioned copper as well. I mean, copper, for instance, uh, can everyone lobby the, their local MP to get onto the Secretary of State and get copper onto the UK critical minerals list? Uh, <laughs> I can't see anyone doing that. <laughs> All right, it's it was, this is in that right, it's right astonishing. to draw. It, it, I think there's so it many begs issues belief. that people have though with with MPs that Yeah. uh, that go above getting copper on the critical mineral list. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I Well, write to you the if, urgent. Uh, if what? this reaches one or two people, and and that they that that person emails or writes or phones up, it might just make Won't a difference. make a bit of difference. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> every little Let's counts. be honest. Let's be honest. Yeah. There are laws that should go through about you know personal safety or anything else. Uh, you know things that really matter that don't get through Parliament. I can't see the putting copper on the on the critical mineral list to get up there. Can you Well, can you see them it, debating it, that? it's It's on quite. it's on the it's on the European U, the EU critical minerals list. It's on the US critical minerals list. It's on the Australia critical list. But for some reason, it's not on the UK critical minerals list. And when you consider, you know, every Is it because we don't have any? Um, I mean, in in uh, we don't really have any interest in copper, do we? You know, well, we do. uh, we don't produce it. We 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 have a big mine up in Wales. We have the Paris Mountain Mine, which uh, which is has discovered a huge band of copper underneath. And old existing mine works and uh, and projects like this could get funding from you know such entities as the UK Infrastructure Bank um, and you know create prosperity, create employment. Um, they can use Holyhead Port to ship the ore out. Uh, all, all of that, yeah, you know. So the infrastructure is there, but um, because it's not in the UK critical minerals list right now, it's not getting the attention and the funding support that it could be. So It it's. doesn't need it from the UK. Okay, why, why don't you just why don't you just uh, you know knock up one of those uh, petitions, the government petitions, and get people to say, get hundred thousand signatures on that, Al, and um, Well, the locals, the, the I'll local, treat you a pint. <laughs> the, the, the local Anglesey MP has has been uh, has had a few communications about this, but uh, I, I'm uh, she's going to get a whole load more in the next few months. Mark my Okay. words. Yeah, good. good. Well, it's like one of one of those you know government petitions. Get a hundred thousand signatures, and and you'll get that. And um, Hmm. and uh, and also you know maybe produce a draft email, little copy, maybe something like um, dear Mister MP or Mrs MP, I apologise. Uh, please could you put copper on the critical mineral list because it's a mineral and it's critical. End of regards, Alan Green. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, okay. typical internal combustion vehicle, 23 grams of copper, um, 
an EV takes 83 grams of copper. So, you know, there you go. Oh, yeah, but the copper's rallying. We know that. I mean, it'll happen. I mean, exactly. Apparently, exactly. But this yeah. is all done in China. It's all done in China. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. I had John Mayer on um, you know, uh, from SP Angel uh, last mm. week. And he said, uh, I can't remember the stats, but uh, EV vehicles have risen by 80% sales. That's what will drive it. And the BYD, of, you know, yeah. this car, yeah. they're now selling those for 10 grand. Mm. So it's like, and that is also, well, if they can sell that over here, that's you know because you don't really i said to john there's two issues you have with ev cars one is that they're quite expensive compared to you know ICE vehicles two yep. is 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 the range now if, if, you, if you sell them a 10 grand you don't mind having that as a hop around town car because mm. like i think it's about uh, what 60 percent of the journeys you do are less than five miles in distance exactly. so it's fine yeah. so um if the, yeah so i mean china's going to steal the march and everything here but of course they're going to need the copper as well uh, because there's loads of copper. So I, I'm, I'm saying 23 kilograms in a normal car. So, so how in much turn, in it? Internal combustion uh, engine car, uh, average of 23 kilograms. In an EV, it's 83 kilograms. So that's yeah. a huge difference, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it, it, it's hugely important. And as you rightly say, I mean, we we have a we have a an electric Skoda of all things, and um, it's a great little car. We went to London on Saturday. You know, drove around London, came back, one charge, easy. So we've done 8,000 miles on the thing so far, and it has cost us the grand total of £610 to charge. For 8, Is that good? Miles. That's good. Oh, 8,000 8, miles. Sorry, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. can't So how much yeah. am I? So, and, um, okay, so and, and on a normal day, you know, winter's worse. But um, so if you fully charge it, how far can you go in that? 250, 260 miles. Oh, that's plenty, isn't it, mate? Really? Which is plenty, who, yeah. who does that in a day normally? I mean, most people don't do anywhere near that. They do no, five no. miles to the supermarket no. and back or whatever. Exactly. Know, or to work, yeah. which is half an hour away. Yeah. yeah, this is it. But, but I mean, from here on the south coast, you can drive to London, drive around London, no congestion charge, no uh, no, no ULS charge, nothing, and then drive back all on one charge. And, uh, you know, average charge is about, I don't know, £13, £30. Oh, pounds. Okay. So, yeah, so we've got yeah. a charge station on the house. You use your high vat with a with a with a smart meter uh, or a, um, a a smart meter. So so you so you time your you know, the charge to uh, draw when the when the power's at at, uh, at its lowest cost. And uh, yeah, it's about thirteen pounds a charge. Yeah, I think as soon as those prices are coming down, that will break the market. They will start seeing lots of demand. No wonder there's big demand in China when, you know, I suppose, I don't know, maybe 10 grand is more expensive than there. But, uh, you know, when you they, when they break that price point, when it becomes a no-brainer on the price issue, people just buy one anyway. Because everyone starts to worry about these 200-mile journeys. You don't go on 200-mile journeys. Most people don't do 200-mile journeys. It's like, not, get not, over it, you know. Not in the UK. I, I, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's good in the UK because we have a, a relatively advanced infrastructure and we're, we're a small country. The bigger countries, it's a bigger problem. So so when the range gets up to four or 500-mile range, then, you, you, you know, uh, and the batteries are already here to do that. They've already been developed and taken that far. You know, that that's that's going to change everything. That That's, the, that's yeah. going to be the tipping point. So can the the the, the FTSE one hundred that so downwards a series of low, lows starts starts having now you know the highs the lows there so yeah. it's, sorry so a series of lower highs then they sort of level out here they start running up now a series lows, of higher lows high, breaking high up lows. above that range so it's quite yeah. nice there and but yeah, yeah. the, uh, the, anyway so what, go on what else what, what do you want to talk about Al? Which, which stock was it sorry okay so so three stocks to talk about want to talk about the. Uh, Harlan and Wolf first of all, H A R L. Of course, the oh, really? the eponymous shipbuilder. Go on, then. Let me just say, I, I've got. I um, mean, you know, I've started the UK's first ever microcap league, right? And they're ranked on lots, but twenty different metrics, uh, mostly growth, value, um, health, efficiency, uh, momentum, potential. That company, I've got now 115, 117 stocks on there. They've got to be about sub hundred million generate revenue. Harlan Wolf was at the bottom. Is um, very indebted and it's a little bit worrying, to be honest. It's got a lot of debt, right. yes, yeah. yes, granted, but it also has a uh, it's 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 part of a consortium with a 1.6 billion uh a contract to the team resolute contract to build uh three uh fleet auxiliary raw fleet auxiliary uh, uh ships and um the as a result they are expanding the, the facilities. The, the, the issue Harlan and Wolf have got is that they have these shipyards which are incredibly expensive to run they've got to train staff up and they have that they have these existing 
assets which are very hard to uh, to to restructure and refinance. And of course, when you're tendering for shipping contracts around the world, they don't. It's not just signed. It's 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 a long protracted process to to win a contract. So in the meantime, you've got to pay those people. You've got to keep the facilities going. All the rest of it. And of course, that's where that's where the debt factor comes in. And as we saw last year, they they have. Uh, they have worked to uh, the, the, they've worked to uh, uh, re restructure their funding and they've got uh, 200, 200 million of funding in place but they also have this this contract with uh, as i say the uh, uh, royal fleet auxiliary which is going to be worth a tremendous amount of money o over the next few years they've just won uh, or they've just been elected the preferred bidder for the Falkland, by the Falkland Island government to uh, rebuild the Falkland Island port replacement or uh, uh, to rebuild the Falkland Island port um, at Stanley. Um, and that's going to generate revenues between 100 and two, 120 million over a two year period. They've also just won uh, a new contract with uh, uh, for the, the Arnish uh, yard up in Scotland. And uh, that's going to be it's a fabrication contract uh, worth some three million. So it's bit by bit. It's a it's a difficult business to run, but uh, uh, backed and cornerstone by this uh, this uh, uh, Royal Fleet Auxiliary contract or Team Resolute contract, um, it's very well placed, I think, for the next few years. And and John Wood, the chief executive, has worked very hard to restructure the business, uh, put the business in place, and and. Um, they they're now really able to compete um, internationally around the world, and they're able to compete with other companies going for contracts to rebuild. You know, as we just heard, the the, the Falklands port, um, and uh, you know, th this is a a sign of, of an evolving company. As you rightly point out, just there is a lot of debt on the books, and there is a yeah. What's one word about? I mean, I, and an issue the, the, with that debt, but, um, but the revenue is growing, but it's you know, like I said, it's it's very low margin. And there's a lot of debt. I mean, look at the cost. Mm -hmm. of, so half year to, to 30th of January, they went from uh, last year 15.4 million to 25.5 million revenue top line. Um, and if you look at the, the operating loss, you know, it went from 14 million to 17.6. Now, if we look at the sort of balance sheet down here, loans and borrowings, uh, or current loans and borrowings, 98 million, right? Mm -hmm. um, and loans and borrowings are non current. Another sort of nineteen million. So yeah. that's that's and what's the market cap? Yeah, the market cap is just nineteen million. Oh, so so, so, so yeah, so that that is it, it's quite worrying, isn't it? Really, I mean, well, I, 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 I would say this is a very high risk play. Uh, be careful because uh, you never know what could happen here. They've got net liabilities of seventy nine million. They Not have. Any, uh, they have, but they have a contract. The the, the contract with. Uh, with Team Resolute is going to generate, uh, it's going to be generating about 100 million a year um, by the end of next year, and will continue to generate that sort of revenue ongoing. So, you know, and that's just one contract. Um, on the back of this, that they're, they're on the back of the contract wins, they've reinvested into into plant, they've reinvested into the the shipyards and they're now able to compete and tender the contracts alongside other major shipbuilders around the world um and that's why we're seeing you know preferred business but a yeah i just want to say let people know it's, it's a risky it's a risky i mean in this area of mm. high debt you know uh, high debt environment you know yeah. look at that on the cash flow statement they paid 1.3 for the half year in repayment of borrowings um and lease liabilities and of course that is not coming from a profit. It's coming from a loss. So uh, you know that with, with that with that cash, you know, it's a, I I would say there are other plays out there that are not as risky as this. I'm just saying, be careful. Be very aware if you're going to invest in this. Of course, it could be a, you know excellent top line, uh, but you've got to look at are they making cash to service that debt because that's that what what worries me essentially. You know, it's a little bit worried now. Uh, well, I th I think you can worry about the the, the debt that's uh, and, and you should and and uh, as we spoken before uh, we've spoken before about companies like war paint you know like uh, like 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 I don't the business of war paint what they the war paint are generating cash yeah, yeah. so and war paint yeah. different margins as well so it's and, the, and the top line growth and different, different margins you know, different yeah. business model different structure different you know uh, more capital and it's obviously. There we are. There yeah, we yeah. I, 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 I mean, the, the, there are pros and cons, and I, I totally get the debt picture. But, uh, but I think also if you, I don't think you do well. I don't think you are getting the debt picture. I, this is really worrying. 
I understand the debt picture totally, but I also understand the the revenues that the that this that uh, the company is going to be earning um, from the the team resolute contract, and and that basically covers the debt as, uh, uh, comfortably. So so when you look forward and you look what this contract has provided for the group, it's put it onto uh, an international footing. They've been able to on the back of this contract when upskill staff uh, at uh, the shipyards. Um, in order to compete with the very best companies, which is why, as I say, they've now got preferred bit of status with the Falkland Island government. And I think you're going to see plenty more of these contracts come in. So so whilst they're carrying this debt, um, they're not going to be incurring a huge amount of additional debt on top of this. So if they can increase their revenues, increase their margins um, and the debts at the current level, then it becomes a very different business. And that could happen. That could happen pretty rapidly. But uh You know, obviously, well, there's two big ifs. I just, just want to you know, warn people it's, it's quite a high risk situation. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, in this, uh, it, when debt costs so much these days, it's, it's very hard to service that level of debt. Um, so well, it, I think if you, if you look at where the uh, you know, the, the share price performance, uh, you know, hasn't been good, but I, th I think given that, that there is a there is uh, plenty of uh, share price resistance, if you like, at the current level. So uh, I, I think going forward, you know, if we're looking at uh, if we're looking at uh, the the uh, the uh, the two floors that were set recently, uh, both in February and uh, and of course uh, um, at the end of March, and then also laterally, if we go back to we go back to uh, July last year when we hit that last low. So, so we're seeing this, this the the company come back, revisit those lows, and then and then bounce off again. And uh, that that uh, I, I think from a, a share price performance standpoint, we need to be you know getting back up to nineteen to twenty p before we could we could say that it's it's broken out of the current cycle. But uh, there's certainly a flaw around uh, just below where we are now. So. Uh, you know, I, I think if you're if you're buying it at, at this level, um, then yes, debt notwithstanding, I think uh, I don't think you'd be exposed to too much more downside. Mm, I'd wait for it to break up rather than break down. Yeah, <laughs> I always yeah. I always buy the strength rather than weakness because it could break yeah, down. You know, yeah, there's it's, nothing to say that friend. floor can't go. Um, <clears throat> okay, what's the next one, Al? Okay, so in IPO today, uh, we've spoken on numerous occasions about the eponymous Mr. Carl Friel. Uh, in uh, who's he's a nice guy, Carl. I like Carl. I got a lot of time for Carl. He's very successful. He's very, you know, he knows his stuff. He's um, yeah. Uh, you know, well, I, you know, what I, my biggest regret is I I took a position in um, it was Open Orphan at the time, mm. and uh, literally I just thought this guy's raised uh, a big chunk of money, a twice the market cap premium, and literally he put money into it. I thought, this is unbelievable. So I put some in, and it rallied. And for some reason, I took some, took it off, and uh, and then it went off. <laughs> that yeah, yeah, was well, a silly thing to do. Yeah, but uh, no, Carl Hill's got a very good track record. So anything he does, it's worth paying attention to. I'm not saying invest in it, but pay attention to what he's doing. Do some research because he's a shrewd guy, and he tends to you know put a bit of his money on money, which I don't quite like, you know. Well, he's a shrewd guy, and he he surrounds himself with shrewd people too, and uh, and that's uh, and I was having a. A chat before I came on uh, on air with uh, with somebody who I, I respect immensely, who has been in the markets for many years, and uh, you know has he's probably at one stage run about seventy companies at at one time. He's uh, an incredibly clever chap, and uh, he knows Carl and greatly greatly respects him. Uh, for some reason, the message about the IPO hadn't got to him, but uh, he's he's he, uh, came, he he went straight came straight off the phone off talking to me, and he's gone and. Uh, Got and got involved, so that's that's very good to see. But um, European Green Transition is Carl's new venture. Um, EGT. What, I, I, they've changed the thing on here. London sort of changes to have a. Um, I can't. I can't see it. Can you see it? Look at the IPOs. Uh, debt equity main market. Uh, direct list of SPACs. It's not that. So if, it used to be if on you here. just if you just type in European Green Green Transition into the into the top right hand corner. Uh, European. I want to see if uh, green. Green transition, yeah. EGT is it? EGT, that's it. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Oh, what's it all about? What's it all about, Al? What's the? Uh... Okay, so so the company's aim is to capitalise uh, and build a portfolio of green economy assets in Europe um, to capitalise on what we've been discussing. You know, right at the start, you know, the copper price, the gold price, the 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 energy transition. So the move 
to EVs, the move to clean energy, the move to, to green technology, uh, in line with what governments across the world are aiming to do, which is to reach that net zero point. Um, now, Carl has put together a team. He's got, he has Aidan Lavelle, who's coming as CEO. Aidan's a very experienced geologist, many years' experience in the mining sector. Um, and uh, his core strategy is to uh, invest into assets and advance these assets by identifying value inflection points uh, and then implement a what they refer to as a disciplined strategic investment approach and monetize those assets through sale or partnership with larger industry players or investors. Now, if that sounds familiar, that's Carl's mantra. That's what he does because he's able to bring people together. He's able to spot assets uh, at a certain valuation uh, have the vision to be able to develop and build those assets up and then partner with players uh, further down the road. That's exactly what he's done with HVivo and with Pullbeg. They, Pullbeg, uh, as Pullbeg uh, develop uh, uh, pharmaceutical and biotech assets. Uh, they take them on to a certain point and then they partner with the big players or sell them on at a later stage. And both... Uh, uh, Carl has done it with Amrit Pharma, of course. Amrit Pharma started out as a as a small uh, company, uh, was sold some years later and uh, made a huge amount of money. I mean, he moved Amrit Pharma on for $1.48 billion. He's done this in the energy sector before too, acquired Cove Energy in 2009 for $1 million, sold it, uh, sold it uh, just under three years later for $1.9 billion in 2012. An open orphan, of course, we've already discussed open orphan and H vivo. So he's got a track record, and also, the, if Carl gets involved in something, then you know the markets, uh, the, the market perks up and listen, and listens, but also looks at the timing of what he's doing. And I think uh, what he's done here is is a very clever move because he's come in at a time where research research uh, resource stocks are uh, have ha had a very tough few years. Um, the prices are still low. There is interest there. Uh, some of the prices are starting to move. But something like this could play a major role in reigniting interest in that sector. So the company currently has uh, three assets. It has the Olsrum Rare Earths project in Sweden. It mm -hmm. has uh, the Pajala Graphite project also in Sweden. And it has a series of assets in Saxony in Germany uh, look, uh, to do with lithium uh, and, and other metals. Um, so it's going to invest in and develop and look at these projects, invest into other projects, and it'll it'll basically uh, exit when the time's right, when the value inflection point is reached, and then move on to the next stage. All the while building value, and uh, and you know you know the, certainly uh, the IPO today has been very well received. I mean, he raised six point four five million uh, from institutions, including his own company Raglan Capital. Uh, and there was a uh, there was a book bill with retail investors too, where a further five hundred thousand was raised. So basically, seven million raised in total. Um, and uh, you know the company's come to the market uh, uh, listed at at ten p. So uh, in a, a really a really sort of strong uh, a really strong uh, strong performance, I think, to come from the group. Um, interesting too on the EGT website. Uh, present EU president uh, Ursula von der Leyen is. Uh, quoted on there saying rare earths will soon be more important than oil and gas our demands for rare earths alone will increase fivefold by 2030 so if you just let that sink in you know we've seen so many small oh, hang on I'm not, I'm not... right sunk in now <laughs> what's up it's sunk in now i'm letting it sink in. in okay it's sunk okay in, right. it took Very a while good. Very good. So, you know, long so it's now sunk in. So, so let that sink in. You know, it has sunk in. Um, all of these, the companies that are working with uh, on these assets or have projects uh, uh, mining for these assets, it, you know, the they there's going to be a supply squeeze. Uh, we we know this, and uh, you just we've already discussed the amount of copper, for example, in internal combustion vehicles compared to EVs. You then look at graphite in EVs. You know, the amount of graphite that's taken up, and then. When you get to wind turbines, all the magnets that are uh, needed in those wind turbines, the rare earth, the rare earth elements that uh, that uh, create the magnets, you know, there, there, there are there are the, the the amount of applications are are nebulous in this regard. So, uh, yeah, the, the company's come to market. We're going to hear a, a lot more from Carl um, over over the next few weeks. Uh, um, Carl and his team, are particularly Aidan Lavelle, the, the chief executive, but uh, it's 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 exciting because. 
he's got involved um, and he sees an opportunity. Um, and I think the market as a whole and also investors in other uh, small resource companies should take heart from that because when a big investor like this comes in, sees an opportunity, it means the market is probably going to turn. Yeah, well, do you know what I was just going to say? I, I know Kyle's clever, and uh, he's you know he's a there we are. It's Raglan Capital, which is uh, part of him, and these owns five point three percent. But I'm just thinking, um, yeah, Jeremy Martin is that Jeremy Martin from Horizonte? It's uh, it could well be. It could well be. Wow. Yeah. Um, we didn't even put any money into his, if that's Jeremy Martin. I don't think he put any money into Horizonte. He had lots of options. Um, <laughs> He obviously has got money there, which will annoy mm. the shareholders. But mm. no, I know Carl is very clever. I'm just thinking, at the moment, I said back, you know, back three years ago, most of the stocks I held were loss making, you know, because the money was cheap, it was easy to raise money, and it was all about hope high potential. They rallied like crazy. It's a different market now, of course, and, and now eighty percent of my stocks are, are you know, are, are cash generative stocks. They don't need to go to the market. Um, so people, companies who need to go to the market, and you're generally, you know, pre revenue resource companies. Are suffering a lot, and that's why because you know any rise in share price, they'll they'll, they'll raise money into it. It'll get weak again, uh, and this and they can't raise a lot in this market. So it, you know it's going to be raising money as often as they can. So yeah, I'm just wondering if he's right. Maybe if Kyle's that sharp, he's called the bottom here in the resource market because we're seeing copper rally and we're seeing gold rally. Yep. Maybe he is. Who knows? Maybe, but I, I, I still don't think it'll get easy. Well, no, it depend on that. It depends if no. it's rally side. I don't, it I don't never think it'll goes be up in a straight line. It, no, I, I think even when if they reduce interest rates by like you know a quarter of one percent, the markets are not going to go bananas and and uh, all of a sudden it's easy to raise money for pre resource companies. It, I think it'll be hard for a while still, uh, because people don't tend to believe a rally is happening. You know, most private investors invest through the rear view mirror. They don't look ahead. They look behind and what's look at their portfolio values. Like, oh, it's awful, and they start to sell at the bottom. Yeah. It is awful because you're at the bottom. It's like, you know, look forward a bit. Uh, that's what you should be doing. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, because, um, of course, different thing is when he did Open Orphan, um, there was you know, revenue generation quite quickly, you know, or there yeah. already was revenue generation because he had uh, the other side of it. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. But um, we'll see. Uh, so he didn't have to rely on the market. So what was it? Um, yeah, Ven. So Ven already had cash uh, money coming in. And I yeah, got yeah, yeah. there as well. Yeah, so, uh, Okay. Yeah. This is a different set of challenges and probably, yeah. I'd argue, his greatest challenge to date. But I think um, the fact that he has confidence uh, to to launch into the A market now, firstly, it's a, it is a vote of confidence in what has been a pretty torrid year for the London Stock Exchange and, and AIM in general. Um, and, and secondly, you know, it does, I think, signal a turning point in the market. And, uh, you know, for a, a, a big investor like Carl, because, you know, he's... He will have done a lot of background work and yeah. you know work with a lot of advisors to to well, work. Well, times on his side, isn't it? Times on his side. If you think about it, I mean, you like I said, you have got the you know the the European sort of uh, you know uh, I said you know European Commission saying that they want to source you know more projects from uh, you know source more critical minerals from the mm. EU area because largely we rely on China and you don't want China holding the, the strings to your, the metals that will power your your, your industries. Yeah. So that's going in his favour. And of course, yeah, commodities are at lows or they were at lows. They've been, you know, having a hard time of it. So, it's, it's, you know, if, if you're going to buy something, people are buying stocks, resource company stocks, a lot higher level two years ago. Mm. So if you mm. still think it's a good project, it's worth so much now, why wouldn't you buy it now if it's like, you know, 60% cheaper or 100% cheaper or 90% cheaper? Uh, it wouldn't be 100% cheaper because it would be bust. But, you know, there are resource companies out there whose share price is down by about 90%. Now, if you were buying them two years ago, why? Was it just sentiment? Or do you still think there's value in the project? If there is value in the project, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be buying now because it's a lot cheaper, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, I, I, and also, you know, I, th I think the... I think the challenge lies in um, in these companies getting getting through that uh, that that phase when they are in exploration phase. They're not generating money. Um, I mean, we you know I, I interviewed um, I interviewed Ryan Me, the chief executive of uh, Fulcrum Metals, uh, 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 last week, and uh, we were talking about um, 
you know, cash generation and they have a gold tailings project and they, they're going to be generating cash from there in the not too distant future. And that's, you know, that that's how you've got to think. He's then also looking at licensing some, some technology that could be, that could be sold on to other companies to use. Um, so, you know, I, I think as a chief executive, if you're going to survive, you know, what this difficult period for miners, when it's hard to raise money, generally speaking, you've got to be innovative and you've got to think of different ways of doing it. And uh, I certainly, I mean, there's, that's, uh, you know, we're going to talk about ECR Minerals in a second, and that's what they've managed to do during a very difficult time for the markets. Yeah, so saying they've uh, raised gross proceeds of 6.46 and uh, market cap around about 14 million. 14 well, they, million. Well, well, they raised 6.46 million from institutions, including uh, Carl's Raglan Capital, but they've also raised a further 500,000 from uh, a book build with retail investors too. So Okay, oh, uh, marvellous. Lovely. Okay, go on, on to ECR then. They've just raised some money, haven't they? Uh, they have, yes. They've raised a further five hundred eighty-five thousand at. That's the trouble you see at the, in the market now. In the bull market, it doesn't matter. But what happens is, is that, do you know the best performers are? People don't think about it. They, they play around with pre-revenue resource companies all the time because they do spike, and there's a chance to make a good bit of money if it rallies. But if you keep having to go back to the market, of course, and and, and raising money, then that affects the momentum of the share price because you're dealing with shareholders, and you usually done at a discount. So you do have this, you know, cycle of of. Share price rallying, raise, mm. comes back down, uh, and it's hard in a bit bear market. I mean, you know, but well, anyway, what, uh, yeah, go yeah, on. I, I was going to say, I, th I think uh, we saw a sea change in the business last year. I mean, uh, you know, if you, we look at what ECR have done, um, and Andrew Haythorpe and the team, uh, you know, worked hard to keep the business on an even keel after Craig uh, Brown sadly died. Of course, we, 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 you know, we've spoken about that before, just and um, and uh, he. He stepped down in September last year and in came Mike Whitlow, a.k.a. Doc Holliday, and also um, and also Nick Tulloch. Uh, of course, Nick Tulloch is chief executive of, of uh, Voyager Life 2. Um, and between the two of them, they they came in, uh, they raised they raised 585,000 in September last year at 0.175p, but they didn't do it through a broker. They, they went out to high net worths. And I've seen that. I've seen the list of people who invested into the company um, and it's backed by some pretty impressive people. Uh, so they raised the money. They've gone back to Kresik and they have they have been drilling in Kresik where I think uh, the management team always felt the greatest potential existed. And um, today they've come up with a really strong result from uh, an area called Cuboid Hill, which is north of Ballarat, the town of Ballarat. Um, but that entire area is full of historical workings, full of historical uh, gold mines. And um, today they've come back and they, uh, they, they, they found two high grade results, but they, which is uh, what was far more significant was they found extensive mineralization over a large area uh, with an average grade over those large areas of, you know, three, three grams per ton in some areas, 2.25 grams per ton. And that compares to uh, to mines where you're seeing head grades of at around the same level, or elsewhere in Victoria where grades average around 0.7 grams per ton. So what it means is, for the first time in the company's history, they've actually got something they can commercialise, which is of a commercial standard, and that's hugely significant. Um, now, also, uh, Nick Tulloch is notoriously tight, being a Scotsman as well. And he's very careful, very frugal with the books. And he won't mind me saying that either, uh, by the way, Nick. Um, so he's he's run the company very carefully. They have uh, or had a number of historical assets, including uh, including several drill rigs. Um, they, they bought a new uh, drill rig, which finally arrived from China last year. And they have now sold that rig to a company. They're getting paid $33,000 a month uh, over the next 10 months. They've also sold some other plants. They've raised $70,000 here. They've raised other money here. They also have a property in Kresik, um, and they're selling that, that. They've applied for planning permission to build a house on that property. They're then going to sell that land on, bring the money back into the company. Plus, a few weeks ago... They oh, well, they're going to build a house and sell the house? No, they're going to get planning permission because you can sell oh. the land for more when it's got planning permission to build a house. So, so they're going to sell that. So... And then a couple of weeks ago, they raised 
a further 585,000, this time at 0.3p. So, and as Mike said at the time of the race, we were offered this money at 0.3p by a broker, so we took it. And the broker, who I know, Axis, uh, uh, Axis Capital, raised the money for very modest fees. So the brokers are now realising, no, you can't go to market and smash the price to pieces. You've got to work with the companies, share their vision and work alongside them. And that's what Axis have done here. So not only do ECR now have money to execute their, their campaign plans for the whole of the year, they've they've also got further money to come in from assets that they have yet to sell. And, you know, this is very important. I think, you know, they've now got a commercial asset in Victoria. They've got more results to come from there. They've got more results to prove up. But I think we're going to see, uh, I think we're going to see this company really take some big, some big steps forward this year. Um, and the fact that they're fully funded and they've got more money coming in, I find that, you know, that's going to be very comforting, I think, to investors going forward. Well, how much how much is the raise? I mean, the trouble is, drilling is not cheap, is it? You know, it doesn't last. Very it's long, not cheap. No, no, it? no. So, so they've got thirty three thousand a month coming from the rig sale. They've raised a further seventy thousand from the sale of an excavator. They've got other bits and pieces they're selling off too. They've got the house. Uh, that they've got the land rather in Creswick that they're going to sell. They'll probably get about four hundred thousand uh, Aussie dollars for that. Maybe a bit more. Um, uh, then they've got uh, they've just raised a further five hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. So they've got everything covered for the year. And when Nick says they've got it covered, believe me, they've got it covered because Nick is very careful with what he spends and and uh, he runs a runs a very tight tight ship financially. So but they're selling stuff and, and again that mission it's quite you know in the tough market you have to be wily you know you have to use what yeah, you can to raise the money exactly. and, and uh, exactly. I like the fact that again planning for mission a house there and um, yeah, maybe we should get a planning mission for you know a mansion and just sell it for that so we, yeah, seventeen yeah. bedroom house and uh, seventeen bed house so, so some rich Aussie <laughs> billionaire comes in and, you know buys yeah. the land at a premium but um, but and it's probably got gold in the garden. It's, it probably has. <laughs> if you if you but, look there, yeah, yeah, um, but 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 I think but I think if if you look at uh, but look at that share price and that it's, it's literally that's dreadful, isn't it? But it was look at that, it's three twenty a share back in two thousand ten. Yeah, I know. And now it's know. point. What is it? What is it now? It's, it's point uh, point three. Well, that's like it, a, it, that's like ninety nine percent value of destruction value there. If you look at it from if you look at it from uh, from September last year when Mike and uh, Nick joined, you know you can see you can see what they've done for the company since joining, and obviously we've seen the shares blip up briefly over over point four p, but uh, it's that series of higher lows again, just you know, and that's what we're seeing. We're just seeing a picture of building value, and each time the share price retracts, it you know it comes back to that higher low point, and you know you're building a floor there, and I think. Uh, and I think the way the news has been managed and, uh, you know, the fact that there's more money, money to come into the company. Um, and also, when Nick went to Australia a few months ago, uh, they're talking about, you know, they, they, were t they had lots of meetings with other companies over there. There was a lot of interest at the Minds and Money show that I attended last year. I interviewed a few people there too. There's, you know, there, there's a, there is a buzz around this company at the moment. And, uh, you know, I, th I think they're, uh, of all the small cap companies you could look at and back, I think ECR have got their ducks in a row for 2024. Well, don't worry about ducks. Uh, gold you should be worried about. Hey, listen, <laughs> Al, I, 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 you hold some stock in this, don't you? I hold a lot of stock in this, yes. There we are. We have to be, are, you on the, are, you on the, are you a significant holder, Al? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, oh. TR1 level. No, but uh, I, I certainly hold plenty of stock. Yeah. Well, yeah. we we got to point that out because uh, you know Alan is. Uh, I do have an interest. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also have an interest in Hull and Wolf too. I, I've I'm invested into there and. Uh, do you like high risk? You hey yeah, yeah, hey. Yeah. yeah. But oh, uh, but that. but again, you know. Oh bloody hell! Sorry, go on. Yeah, you you look at the you look at the risk risk uh, reward ratio, and I think you. You look at, risk. at what the company is doing, um, and also the revenue it's got lined up to come in from these big contracts. Um, what they're doing, what they have to do, is restructure the borrowing, uh, and then when that money comes in, they the debt gets paid down, and all of a sudden you've got a company with huge assets, with a highly skilled workforce, with the very latest in technology that's competing globally to win big contracts. I know that, Alan. 
but debt, we've talked about this. Remember, what was the company we kept arguing about on debt? And in the end, it went through. What was that? <laughs> Tom, was it Tom, that was Thomas Cook, yeah. Thomas yeah, Cook. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. we had a bit to and from for that one months. And in the end, it went bust. I said, I don't like to say I told you so, but um, you know, I just think well, debt no, is a, it's almost like I, a, it's like a I rope around someone's a... neck with a stone on it. You run kind of hard to swim with that on it. And all of a sudden, I think adding a... the stones to it, the, the rope. I think there's a slight difference there because uh, I was recommending Thomas Cook as a trading stock uh, because the share price, and I remember it was bouncing between 10p and 20p. So I got only a few times and traded between 10 and 20p. But um, uh, So what are you, you saying? Know, Harland is an investment, is that what you're saying? I think Harland is is a, a, a good a, a, a good investment at, the, at these levels, yeah, because we are at that year low. We've seen we, we've seen that, that, that floor uh, under the company, under the share price, um, and it's managing the debt. The company is managing the debt, but it's the Falkland government are not going to award a contract to a company they think is going to go bust, are they? I don't know. It's, it's, I don't they, know. They are preferred, How much due diligence does the Falkland government do? I don't know. I mean, they, they are they, preferred bit of status. So yeah, you know, yeah. But they're if, not going if, to if, get if, that if, But if they do go bust, then it'll just go to the second um, bidder. Right? They take over the contract. You know. So. It doesn't bother the Falklands it, government. It's a little more complex, I think. I think we're building ports and shipyards. It's, uh, uh, you know, Wait, exactly. Hang on. That, Who else was on that list? Scale. Who else is bidding for that? <laughs> building ports and things in the Falklands. That's literally. We trying to get to the Falklands. It's no one was. It's a long there, way away. It's a long yeah. way away. Yeah. Anyway, please do your research. All the stocks we talk about because uh, they, you know, they're largely very high risk. Uh, you know, nano cap stocks, uh, pre revenue, lots of debt. <laughs> <laughs> Why we talk? Anyway, uh, there we are. Alan, thanks for that, fella. And we'll speak to you next week. Cheers, Jasper, next week. <laughs> <laughs>